Howdy, Heroes Hearth. This is Kyle Ferguson from Into the Nexus Podcast, and I want to talk to you about macro again, an intermediate macro discussion. My recent video went over XP, where you get it from soaking, from camps, and why you should collect it. Now, I've mainly played solo queue in the past, but I just became shot caller for my NGS and Heroes Lounge team. So I've been hungry for macro information. How can I get my team to do the right thing at the right time that equals a win? And what I want to do is take that organized play information and break it down to the why. So in your solo queue, you can actually make use of macro. It's not all about sweet coordination. It's about simple, logical choices when you get right down to it. Now, macro is how you use your micro with game information to press a win condition and utilize the advantages that you've built. Coming from StarCraft, macro is your economy. This is how you're going to be able to afford your win. So we're going to talk about some particular scenarios that happen on particular maps. And then you can take that information and apply it across the board to Here's the Storm. Let's start off with Volskaya. There are three types of camps, five in total. From my previous video, you know that you want to take camps to equal XP. But what order should you do those camps in, and when? Well, Volskaya makes it very easy because there are item camps and the center objective. The center objective lasts a long time. So having items that have a lasting effect will increase your chances to win the objective. We have our assault camp, our support camp, and the turret camp. Thinking of it just in a pure logical sense, we want the turret camp first. Not because it's worth more XP, but when you take the turret camp, you now have a turret. And when you go to do the support camp and you get in that massive fight versus the enemy team, you have a turret and they don't. Our assault camp pushes the top and we want it to push a lane during the objective. So using that thought process, we can make a simple deduction and we should do the turret camp first, around a minute and 20 seconds. We should aim to rotate together onto the support camp around two minutes with a turret in tow to increase our advantage in that battle should it break out. And then around two minutes, 45 seconds, we're gonna do the assault camp, the siege camp that walks through the top lane. And now we can take that information and apply it to other maps. Hanamura has a turret camp. If you bring a turret to the samurai and a fight breaks out, you have a turret advantage over your enemy. We could even say that our recon, the site camp, is a precursor to the turret, so we have more map control. So we can say, recon camp at 1 minute 20 seconds, turret camp at 2 minutes, and the samurai, the sentinel camp, at 2 minutes 45 seconds, meaning it's pushing during the objective, forcing those choices on the enemy team that'll make them make a mistake. And no map better illustrates the power of a camp pushing during an objective than Battlefield of Eternity. The Shaman camp can get work done if taken right around that 2 minute 45 mark. But we all know this one pretty well. It's a simple choice structure. We've all seen what it can do. There is way more nuance in our other maps. Let's think about Sky Temple where the objective directly fires on and destroys buildings. You can think of your core as having a massive shield. Every building before the core means that you can survive more of an enemy's objective capture. So destroying buildings is how you win Sky Temple. And if you have an advantage, if you have more buildings than your enemy does, that means you can take one Sky Temple pad, the enemy can take the other, and you'll be winning doing nothing but sitting on that pad because of your macro advantage. So when you think about taking Merc camps on this map, things shift from XP gathering to building damage. If your bottom lane siege camp does not get damaged, does not destroy towers, walls, or even a fort, it is not equaling a macro advantage on Sky Temple. So in a lot of other maps where we would take a camp and let it go, Pushing with a camp becomes more important on Sky Temple because we need that damage. Now we can color every thought we have, every plan we make on Sky Temple based on the building destruction knowledge. So if you win a team fight, we need to destroy buildings now, not necessarily take merc camps 
that might possibly destroy buildings later. And we can take that idea and apply it to all maps. And let's ignore Towers of Doom here. We have to destroy a keep on our way to expose the core. As we destroy that fort and into the keep, we open up our avenue for victory. Without building destruction, we don't have an avenue of victory. And everything we're doing is banking on an extreme late game team fight that has the enemy dead for so long that we can destroy all those buildings we were supposed to destroy in the first place. So let's take, for instance, Garden of Terror. The objective spawns in all three lanes, but we need to pick one lane that we're going to siege to open up that victory condition so we can have later access to the core. By pressuring that lane together and making use of our objective, we are also pressuring the other two lanes, which must be split and attended by the enemy players. So now we're looking at perhaps a 5v3 scenario, developed because we know we need to make one route to the core. Now, Alterac Pass also has an objective that pushes all three lanes, but the core gains armor based on how many keeps are available. So we play that one slightly differently and we want to pick the right lane for the job. For instance, I don't want to lead my team onto the bridge in top lane Dragonshire. It is too closed in. We are too weak to enemy AOE on that bridge. I'd much rather use the bottom lane, which has access to two siege giants and a knight's camp. So in the early and mid game, when I'm choosing the lane we are going to pressure with our very first dragon, I want to clear up the bottom lane so I can start that path to victory. Of course, the first dragon's pretty weak and you'll likely just farm the outer walls and towers. Future team fights might have other decisions tied to them, such as I want to destroy the top fort on Dragonshire so my solo laner has an easier time. They don't have to contend with an enemy well anymore. I might want to clear out mid so the enemy doesn't have a base of operations to continually interrupt us when we're channeling the dragon. But ultimately, my goal is to create that pathway to the core. I want you to use every opportunity your team creates to destroy buildings and build that avenue to the core. And stealing enemy merc camps does not really work towards that goal. In fact, there are a few situations where it's a good idea, and there are more situations when stealing merc camps from the enemy side is actually a bad idea. Let's take, for example, Infernal Shrines. You win a team fight, and those shaman camps are darn frustrating. Wouldn't it be great to take the enemy's shaman camp? Well, there's a problem. See, when the shaman camp gets taken on the enemy side, and the enemy top fort is still active, the shaman's gonna start destroying your XP. The shaman is gonna walk into lane, clog up the enemy's minions on their way to you, and you have no way to interact to grab those XP orbs because there's still a fort in the way. Interesting, right? But we do it all the time because it feels good to take the mercs from the enemy side. Let's take that thought and run over to Cursed Hollow. We're a very popular idea after winning a team fight is to take the enemy's night camp. If the middle fort is active, a night camp is going to walk straight into the enemy towers and get cleared up rather easily. Wouldn't it be better if we took that time to destroy the middle fort? And then later on, maybe we can consider grabbing that knight's camp. After all, it can give us some spell armor while we're sieging that middle wall, if that's the avenue of victory we want to use. And this is another thought we can apply across our maps. If we take an enemy side merc, we do deny them access to that XP and that merc in lane. But it is way more valuable with our time to destroy the fort and then take the merc camp because that'll give us map control and do all those things we just mentioned that are great stealing xp and stealing the merc camp now i'm spending a lot of time talking about merc camps and macro because in solo league it's something that one person can do one person can make the decision and have the knowledge to do well-timed merc camps to help your team make good invade choices proper rotations are a whole nother beast so let me introduce an idea of coordinated play, and then we can translate that into Solo League. On Alterac Pass, we know early on, thanks to the minimap, which location the objective is going to be in. Is it gonna to be top or is it gonna be bottom? In coordinated play, once we know that location, the rotation starts between those two lanes. 
so we have map control over the area we're about to be fighting in. But you can do a rotation by yourself after all. Let's say in an extreme case you're Zeratul. Where should you be trolling around, looking for picks, wherever the objective's going to be? In that case, mid and bottom. You will hear so many times from top end players that people in Heroes of the Storm don't know how to macro. But with the tips I've shown today, I hope I've given you some insight as to why we macro the way we do and how you can make informed choices, good choices during your games. Bringing a turret to the support camp or don't take merc camps that destroy your economy, your access to XP. And sometimes the game asks us to do things that aren't fun. The winning strategy on Towers of Doom is to sit and occupy the bottom lane. It gives you complete control over the bottom objective, half of the control over the middle objective, and near complete control over both of the merc camps. Asking people to just sit on one pad and not team fight is kind of silly on Sky Temple. Maybe we can help Blizzard to come up with ways to change these maps, to make those merc camps accessible even if you lose the bottom lane of Towers of Doom. But we can also be nice to our fellow players. We can type in the draft and in the game and let them know the strategies we are planning to use. You will notice that a lot of high-end solo league players are really good at typing. Maybe we should take those typing skills and go update the wikis. I was Kyle Ferguson. In the comments below, let me know your favorite macro strategies for Heroes of the Storm. Be sure to like and subscribe here at Heroes Hearth for more videos. Ring that bell as well, and I'll see you next week.